No. Oh. Oh my goodness. I am rejected. <laughs> um, so let's just, um, I, I just wanted to simply uh, make some of those uh, comments before we get into the uh, main presentation that, you know, this was basically an, an effort for us to take advantage of the Jive code base that was already there to update it to 2.5 and in doing so, really understand what's going on because we're new at this. We, you know, Frank has been working on Jython for a while, but in terms of the internals, really most of the team have just started really working on Jython over the last year to a few years. And this is one effort on our part to just really get a sense of what that code looks like. So given that, um, let's move on. And uh, Tobias will be doing the bulk of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so, um, I'm Tobias, probably get that. Um, end of the talk today, we're going to start with a brief review, then um, take you through our new abstract syntax tree that we have for Jaitan. Um, continue with a crazy idea of an intermediate representation. Um, and then uh, go on with the, uh, with the work I did last summer about compiling uh, Python bytecode to Java bytecode. And finally, really is um, a egocentric one, it's not about that. Um, not really that interesting uh, for this talk, it's more for when you read the slides afterwards, so let me just continue. <coughs> so the new compiler is based on a new idea and the slides are right then. We wanted to use the um, answer for our uh, parser because uh, the old grammar and the old A lot of other a lot of other open source projects have basically adopted Ampler for their usage. And by going and utilizing Ampler, we could dovetail with their efforts. Really think about how do you take an open source project and really revitalize it with a lot of motivation here. So it's not just taking one tool out there that's really good, it's about the fact that other people, there's that interesting synergy that's occurring with that selection of that tool. But that's me thinking as a you know sort of almost a manager at this point. And the second part was cool. yeah, the same reasons that you just mentioned. We wanted to use the um, Java by code um, manipulation library that uh, is readily available and that people use so we can benefit from, from other people's uh, ideas and usages. Um, and this one that we showed them at ASM is very possible and actually quite similar to the code compiler that um, and what it does is that um, we use it to my, map our dynamic comfort uh, of Python to the static environment of Java uh, through creating bytecode with um, indirections and bottom up to, to support your nice body uh, code of the uh, scary Java. Um, one move that we Compiler is also to um, uh, make our objects look more like plain Java objects. The daily objects uh, more previously they look quite weird from a Java perspective, um, and we want to change that. Um, for example, to be able to support uh, uh, logging from regular Java debuggers. Um, and the last point is for generating by code is uh, that. Um, Java there is something called protection, and that is not as slow as regular, it's not as fast as <laughs> regular method manipulation. It's up to ten times slower. Um, and what clause working is uh, is that you generate uh, specific tailored bytecode to do that invocation for you, um, which reduces uh, overhead significantly. So let's continue with the new. Our new application is three in Jason is modeled off the Java for AC module from C Um This has proved to be very useful for us. For example, uh, 
verification that I will mention later on. And the um, uh, EU is, is also enabled um, enable us to we're, we're working with the ESP, but enable us to integrate uh, with the um, ID in a better, better way. So that ID vendors don't have to write their own ESP but then use our ASD One of those things, for example, is there is work uh, starting on NetBeans integration with uh, Um So that's something that potentially can take advantage of this. And then the final point on this slide, dynamic simplex expansion. Since Jitron really is a separate project, we can do, uh, go about and do things that uh, Peter would never let um, this be part of the station, such as um, cooking into the parser and and manipulating um, um, manipulating code and and the tree for generating Python from it. It's really a wild idea, um, but it can be used for for um, making languages and such. Thank you. So the part that we use is as I said, for answer um, version three to be more specific, and this replaces the old JavaScript based compiler. Um, You know, many hands have touched this. Um, you know, so uh, Frank has been the last person who's been working on this, but it's been uh, the, in the interesting thing again in terms of working with Antler is that um, we can take advantage of this very large community that's out there, and it also is very similar to the ACL um, or Zephyr um, project that is currently being used by Python 2.5. Now it's more interesting part from my point of view. Um, the, um, as we said, we modeled the um, abstract simplicity from the uh, RAC model. And that has enabled us to uh, do um, very rigorous testing of, of our RAC. What we have done is that we um, take a module from the uh, C Python uh, library directory. Um, run the uh, C Python parser on it, output the ASP, uh, run our compiler on it, output the ASP, and compare that. And if um, those are equal, then we know that we create a tree. Uh, it's really been uh, a great way to, to do development. It's continuing on with this wild idea as a intermediate representation. The intermediate representation is something that's been around in compilers for ages. Um, in dynamic languages, it has probably never been seen before. Um, okay, I see you're <laughs> nodding there, Jim. I know that you invented uh, an intermediate representation for your platform, and that's probably where I got the inspiration for. Um, it's an experimental project. We don't know if this will be optimal for for the use, uh, all this part of it will, and then uh, maybe we can use other parts of it for, for static analysis on uh, offline compiling or something like that. Um, and uh, but this allows, <laughs> having an intermediate representation allows us to do more research, actually, such as um, uh, we've talked to a professor in um, at the University of Colorado Boulder um, is doing um, a research in graduate typing and uh, he's quite interested in, in sharing this uh, intermediate representation with us and uh, try to do type analysis for Python. We can use to make your code run faster. Um, so this intermediate representation will provide a library for, for those kinds of optimizations. And so some of the things, you, there are numerous uh, cookbook recipes, or at least some cookbook recipes, for example, to do um, uh, tail recursion elimination, things like that. Um, 
the opportunity to go and do that within this new representation is exactly the sort of optimizations we're thinking about. Um, other things in terms of static analysis, there are certain opportunities that uh, present themselves. We have some ideas. Um, during the course of this conference, we'd love to share ideas with other people about what limited opportunities there are for static analysis and how if you do, if, you're, if you look at them optimistically, um, what could you do in order to radically improve performance of Python running on something like the JVM? Okay, and finally, if, uh, where face-to-face -face communication, the lack thereof, can actually result in some very interesting uh, results. So, you know, often not, but sometimes you get something like what we're about to talk about. Um, so what I did was I started working on compiler code for translating uh, Python bytecode to um, Java bytecode.
compared to Corinthian that uh, it's an eternal loop uh, that receives the value, multiply it by a factor, and, and print the value. Uh, and there's a test function that feeds that. Uh, and to the right, you see the expected output from when I'm going to run this later. So try to remember that because I will do a demo of this and uh, you should verify that it actually does what I promised. <laughs> so the first step um, that should be happening, I will be doing this from from <coughs> code. Um, this step is not running now. Um, but we can do this. We just don't have it hooked into the backend yet. But we're sprinting on it on Monday. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing that will happen is uh, generate the ASD. So it would look something like this in a list device fashion. Uh, and if we look at the bytecode of the uh, make receiver function, it would look something like this. Set up a loop, um, the loop condition, then the yield and receiving from that. The one, the one thing in terms of the takeaway, in terms of looking at Python bytecode, is look how, if you can perceive what's going on here, because it's a little bit small font, it is at a very high level compared to the source ASD. Yeah, it's, it's nearly, it, it looks quite a lot like Python code, except um, Python. Um, the result in Java bytecode for, for this would be something like this. Um, with it, just zoomed in on the uh, yield, um, sorry, um, yield value, uh, get the result, check if, it, check if it's an exception, because uh, you can throw exceptions back in with the generators. And one, one thing there is the line of code on the top is all the byte code on the bottom. Yeah, so it's a bit more verbose than byte code. So for importing uh, Python bytecode, we have implemented a module called PYC import. It's just not more than 80 lines of code, and it uses an import hook in Python. It's a really neat. Um, and it emulates the import scheme of C Python, but it shapes the header of the um, uh, of the bytecode file and compares that to the date of the um, um, of the source file. So uh, the code I'll show you will start with import secret import. That will uh, register the import hook. Uh, and then when I run import this coroutine, it will uh, invoke our hook. And then uh, let's zoom in on that hook. So it will find the module and uh, pass it on to the module on my shoulder. That will start with and it will feed the compiler each code block. For each code block, it will, this is the um, byte code, Python byte code of the uh, help code. And there are several times, so there are several blocks. Um, and then finally, it will load the Java byte code using the uh, Java class loader. And uh, turn that into a module. is experiencing when you don't have your uh, display of mirror here. <laughs> you import the uh, import hook, device import. This is actually written um, because of frustrations. We had all this wonderful um, uh, mechanism for doing this, and we're like, how do we actually apply this? Um, what what's the what and then we did, there was a uh, test routine that we could use to do it and then all of a sudden we realized this is just one of those things where if you think about it recursively it becomes an easy problem. 
So if we can recursively import our dependencies, and all of a sudden we can start running large Python 2.5 code within JSON with this new compiler. And by the way, the new compiler is available in the sandbox um, as part of the trunk of JSON. If you're interested in checking it out. And do you remember the expected output? Does it look like the output that we did have? Uh, and I'm just going to show you that I'm not fooling you here. Uh, so if you can hold the mic again, I'll show you that it's indeed not from a PYT file and not from a PY file. Do so. Do you believe us? <laughs> And there is indeed no py file with that name in that directory. <laughs> yes. Uh, the uh, executing the, the code or uh, it's about the same. Please. Okay. So the road ahead. Um, we uh, need to, for first of all, since we don't have the bridge between the front end and the back end, we need to work on that. And that will happen next week, or if I have time in between sessions, uh, maybe earlier. Um, we have the ABB team here uh, in this building this, um, this weekend, and they will be working with us and sharing ideas and so on. Um, maybe code even. Uh, it will be useful there. Uh, we'll hope to, to improve our um, cooperation. And then we have some, some further ideas that we're going to work on. For example, uh, train is, is a larger overhead today. Uh, and we have some ideas for turning, for, for making frame creation lazier and localized variables, uh, which will make those execution faster and Well, we hope. <laughs> and then we have some wild ideas on uh, caching attributes lookout. Um, a attributes lookup team of Python is quite uh, verbose and expensive. <laughs> there are, in Python, I believe, seven different um, ways that you can get, um, get an attribute. Can be a uh, Python, a regular Python uh, attribute, uh, get actor, uh, or uh, property. A job cloud, it can be a Java uh, field, it can be a Java method. There are a bunch of uh, bunch of uh, ways that you can get them as you run. Um, and also, um, while we were out driving from um, from uh, Boulder, Colorado to Crescent View, Colorado, to the beautiful drive, I came up with an idea of, uh, of making arguments for our or I've, I've written the code, but uh, haven't um, haven't uh, put it in yet. Or well, I've outlined the code. Yeah. That's my that we, we have to try. It. Mm -hmm. All of these ideas are untried. Yeah. Um, and then of course there's the um, academic uh, research that the I talked about earlier about typing for specialization from that. Finally, and I would just add to that that you know we don't necessarily have to get it right. I mean that's this um, the Java virtual machine does the same thing. Um, the, I'm sure the CLR does exactly the same thing. You can be optimistic. You can go and um, just uh, infer uh, your specializations, try them out, see if they really work, and not back out like in the Um so I'm going to just uh, speak to this in the last slide here. Again, I really appreciate um, Google's funding. Um, Elias's uh, opportunity to work with me as a student, uh, my opportunity to work with him as a mentor. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, Elias is, um, you know, uh, a Jython committer, um, you know, core member of our compiler team, as you can obviously see in this presentation. And it's all, again, thanks to you know, the funding that Google provided. I do hope that Google will go ahead and once again uh, you know, support the Python Software Foundation for 2008, and that we will have more opportunities to support Jython development work um, as part of this. Um, 
lots of uh, uh, projects that we are thinking about working on this year, including NumPy support on Jicon. Why not bring together some of Jim's work in one place? Um, and so we're going to look at that as a possibility. We certainly encourage any student who's interested in that sort of work. There's going to be a box um, tonight um, for potential mentors uh, for all projects um, for the Google Summer of Code 2008 um, at 7 p.m. tonight in DaVinci. Please, if you're interested, um, being a mentor, show up. If you have some ideas, show up. It's going to be a great thing. So uh, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, yeah. Yes, we actually do emit class files uh, right now. The more interesting thing is emitting jars or files, basically to simplify deployment issues. And that's something that I expect will be significant work done by the summer um, because of the NetBeans integration. And we're also trying to emit class files that you can actually import from Java. Yeah, that, that, that's probably what you're asking. Yeah, we, we do emit class files, uh, but they don't look like, like a regular Java object. But they're very simple for us. Yep. Yes? Uh, I'm just wondering, you mentioned that you have a lot of projects in the Could you repeat that? Like, Yeah, if we can use, uh, I think the first one can uh, uh, cooperate with, with the Firefly uh, and their Java backend. And we have thought about that. Actually, Frank and I talked uh, the day before yesterday uh, about uh, not translating our new compiler to Java, but use Firefly and Berlin instead. So, so we have some ideas. Yeah. Okay, thank you.